welcome to Behind the Gavel. I'm Lori Jennings, Public Information Officer for the Township of Lower Marion, and I'm joined as always by Border Commissioner's President, Dan Bernheim. Thanks for being with me today. And as always, Lori, it is a pleasure to be with you. The board's been very busy, and we have a lot to talk about, so let's get started with land development. The board heard a presentation on one of the largest remaining items in the code revision process, SALDO, or Subdivision and Land Development. So what does this part of the code do, and how does it relate to zoning? Um, great question. So par part of the township code that handles uh, various standards of the land development process is known as, as, as the SALDO. And that's a, a separate section which deals with all right, what are the contents of, of land development plans when, when they come forth and what are supposed to be the layouts, going down to details of road designs and items uh, of, of that area, discussing the areas about you know, greening, which is a, a big issue these days, and connectivity and, and bicycling. So um, when we did the comprehensive plan, it had recommended, look, we need to redo the zoning code and we need to re redo the SALDO so that we could employ best practices that are now relevant uh, as and consistent with what the community then wants. So the two of them, the zoning code and uh, the, the SALDO, they, they work hand in hand. And this is a project that needs to be done and has been worked on ever since we started, you know, remodeling the, the zoning code, which is, you know, was a process all by itself. Absolutely. So why wasn't SALDO included in the comprehensive zoning code update back in 2017? Well, that's an excellent question. And I, I think in an ideal world, it all would have been done at one time. But uh, truth be known, the project was probably more than any of us anticipated, including the experts that we hired from Florida who literally wrote the book on form-based zoning, which is what, what we now have. And as they recognized that Lower Marion's quite complex, when you take a look at our township, on one end we border the city of Philadelphia, and on the western end, you know, the, the famed main line. So we span 180 degrees of the spectrum of all, all different ty type of issues that are out there. So finding a code of, of any nature, you have to recognize one size does not fit all. It doesn't even fit one block from, t from time to time. So we're in the process of doing this now on the SALDO because we had to get the zoning code done. As you well know, as we started doing this, we got what are referred to as placement plans, people saying, all right, let's get some plans in under the old code because we may want to deal with the devil we know until we get the new code. So we ended up breaking this up into two different processes. Great. So what are the, some of the features of the proposed new code? Uh, well, they're, they're, they're a lot. I mean, you're, you're talking about literally getting into the weeds on, on this one. So it deals with various streets, escapes, uh, and what those guidelines are. Uh, what we do in connection with trees and how they're planted. It even gets into, all right, you know, what type of soil and how much that, that are gonna be there so that the trees are gonna, you know, maintain themselves. We deal with uh, something which we're a little bit unique with, uh, transportation demand management. Uh, try to redesign some of the bus stops and maybe we'll pick up the phone and call SEPTA, see if we can get them to you know, uh, agree with us to make them a little bit more user friendly. Uh, we've also uh, have put in, you know, sections that electric vehicles, that's where we're headed. Every major manufacturer is, is you know, working, you know, in order to, to do that. So you need to be able to have places to recharge the batteries. And that takes a period of time and hopefully that technology improves with batteries that take less time to charge and hold the charge for a longer period of time. And then greening from even making sure that our parking lots are you know, recognize the environment that's around them and dealing with that. I think Montgomery County has some standards that are there that we're trying to incorporate as well. And public gathering space, always an important issue. That's included within the SALDO and making sure that when we have development that there's some recreational land that's set aside. And do we do that by saying to those developers, all right, this is a requirement, you must do that? Or do we say, all right, you can have a fee in lieu of doing that? And if we go in that direction, how much is that fee, fee going to be? 
So the, these are some, uh, some of the many items that are contained in the saldo. So what happens next? When might a new saldo be ready for a vote? Well, there's another really good question. You're going three for three. Um, <coughs> so there, there is a, a plan that's out there of what's going to be done and when it's going to be done. And it, as to when there's a vote, if we were to do it by the end of this year or the first quarter of, of next, I, I think that may be, you know, realistic because it actually needs to get, you know, pen to paper or in these days, I guess, fingers to keyboard mm -hmm. in order to go ahead and draft it. And then we have to go ahead and vet it. And the, we did the same thing with the zoning code where we were able to get some professionals and from the Montgomery County Planning Commission and test certain areas and say, all right, what we have in print, does that really work and how does it work? So we need to do that. And that's all set forth in our schedule of, of planning. So as I said, if we're able to do this uh, in a, the fashion that's currently you know, being viewed, um, I'd hope that we get this before the board, if not by the end of the year, certainly by the beginning of next. Well, it sounds like a great goal. In indeed. <laughs> so the board held its annual capital improvement plan workshop in June. And how was this different than all the other years? Well, since we are on hopefully what we call the tail end of this pandemic, and uh, soon to be able to put this in our rear view mirror and then go forward, uh, we need to recognize that you know, last year we had a lot of projects and we put them on hold. But first, one has to understand, all right, what, what is the capital improvement plan, you know, the CIIP? And this is something where we're a little bit unique about this. We take a look every year at projects. These are projects that have at least a 20-year life um, cycle to them and are $10,000 or more in expenses and are basically infrastructure type of projects, things that need repair, remodeling, or, or, or new items. And we plan out for uh, six years of what can be done over a period of time. And we review it every year to see w what we need to do. And we rate by priority of those things that we definitely need, those which are just on a wish list, and those that are even a little bit further da down on the wish list and where's the money coming from in order to, to pay, pay for all these items. And then we prioritize that, review it with um, each of the staff leaders of each department, and then you know, set, set out the plan. So it's unique in that we had put the brakes on for, for a period of time, and now we gotta decide, all right, when we put our foot back on the gas pedal, when, where, and how. So what factors are driving the plan this year? Oh, the, the factors that drive the CIP aren't different this year than any other year. They're what do we need and how much is it gonna cost and where are we gonna get the, the money to do it? And once you put that into the hopper, we then have a, an interesting uh, good problem and that's the American uh, Rescue Plan. So the township uh, is being allotted $25 million and it comes out in two different tranches with certain criteria, some of which we're still waiting to uh, be issued to us so we know what we can do. But part of that we'll be able to utilize for some of these projects that we put on hold, say, all right, we can now f you know, fund these. What else can we do? Being careful, you can't do everything at once. So uh, we need to be able to time it so that we have appropriate planning, engineering, design, personnel, and, and, and going, going forward. So it, it's going to be a unique year with a unique problem that, ah, you know, we, we have some money that we otherwise would not have. And I am sure of my 13 colleagues that all 14 of us will have at least 15 different ideas of what to do with it. I'm sure of that too. Last year, the board deferred several million dollars worth of projects in the wake of COVID. So will these projects be back on track? Well, that, that's hopeful. What one would anticipate that that which you put on hold would probably be, you know, you know, first up. That we were very careful in selecting those things that we could delay doing without sacrificing the, the quality of life here in Lower Marion. And I think that we can state safely and accurately that nobody felt any you know, bump in the road other than the, the potholes that, that may be out there from generally from time to time as we you know, readjusted ourselves. So now we'll fill those potholes, Roto Miller that, that we can, 
Um, using that as an example, when I first came to the board, I think we were doing about eight linear miles a year. We're now up to at least 12 being able to do that. So we'll be able to see you know, what we can do for you know, uh, different roads, just one example. And I'm sure now my colleagues you know, with the, your great viewing audience for this program will be getting emails and phone calls. Please, I want my road done. Absolutely. So when will the board and the public see this plan again? So a as he indicated, June was our first workshop. And that's a time where we take a look at you know, wh where we are and wh where we want to be. We rate the, the um, various projects, A, a B, and C, uh, predicated on priority. Our, our CFO then generally gives us a nice spreadsheet as to what those costs are and how we plan them out over you know, the si six year, year period. And there are other workshops that will, will come forth and the CIP is approved and adopted uh, on a yearly basis. And well in advance of December, we should have something you know, in print that when we go to approve it in December that it's all in favor say aye. That sounds great. Well, we have to take a break, but stay tuned. We have much more coming up here on Behind the Gavel, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Behind the Gavel. I'm Lori Jennings, here with Board President Dan Bernheim. Thanks for being with me again today. And once again, it is always a pleasure, Lori. There was a very complimentary article by Inga Saffron in the Enquirer recently regarding the redevelopment of the Pencoid Ironworks property. How has the township worked to embrace the waterfront along the Schuylkill? Yeah, that, that was nice to see, uh, you know, good, uh, good ink come out of the, the Enquirer. Uh, and uh, appreciate uh, Inga's writing, writing on that. So that, that's an area that's always been uh, a question mark for some, where the Royal Athena went up, as you may recall, some people thinking, oh, it should be a high rise, it should be different than it was. There was talk at one point of putting in uh, single family homes there, and you know, now we have what's actually our, our first hotel in Lower Marion Township. That, that's there, which is really a, an interesting building if you have not seen it, what they did to preserve a lot of the, the, uh, uh, the Pencoid history from there. And it's got some you know, restaurants as we get back to normal that people can, can utilize. So it, it was nice to see that uh, there was some recognition in the paper that you know, there's been focus you know, on, on that area and we're not done. We have you know, some, other, some other ideas in, in mind. So if you go along the river there, uh, there's a nice path uh, you know, from where the hotel is behind Royal Athena, and it keeps going all the way back and you can walk all the way up a hill to um, the, Kin the Kinwood Trail. Now, a lot of that is owned by Norfolk Southern. So we've been in discussions with them because that property's just sitting there doing nothing and I don't think that Norfolk Southern might be real thrilled that we have all these people that are going there, exposes them to some type of liability. Yeah. So we've said, aha, you know, sell, lease, do something, let us control it. And we can turn that into a, a great recreational area for biking, hiking. There's even an area there for folks who are into skating or skateboarding or whatever it is, put a skate park that would be in there it would be absolutely ideal. So we've been in discussions with them and actually had our engineers take a look and our building and planning department take a look to see if we can go ahead and do that. And uh, along with Chris Leswing, our head of building and planning, we f refer to that as our not so private pet project. <laughs> the building and planning department was instrumental in facilitating that development and its amenities like the Pencoid Bridge, public gathering spaces, and trails. And what has this development meant to the trail system in Lower Marion? Well, you're able to you know, hop across from Lower Marion over to the other side, to Philadelphia and to Maniunk, and especially during the summer for those you know, on bikes or foot, to be able to 
you know, do that is just a, a good way to not just get some exercise, but then, you know, get into the other side of the city, get, you know, again, opening, things opening up, place to eat, they want to shop, they want to do something. So it really connects us to the, uh, an interesting part, part of the city, wi which is good. And it connects the bike trail, which is great. You can go all the way out to, to Valley Forge and then, mm -hmm. you know, all the way back the other way, you know, all the way in, into the city. So th this is something that we're looking to continue to develop. And I, I give uh, our director of building planning, Chris Leswin, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of credit for that. And he's also been working with the city of Philadelphia who either by his prodding or on their own, who cares how they got there, they now consider this a, a key project to work on. That sounds great. It goes without saying that this last year and a half has brought unprecedented challenges for everyone. As we wrap up the show this month, I thought we could try to give viewers a sense of the state of the township and how we've weathered this strangest year of years so far. Yeah, I, and I think I said this the last time we, we were here that we, um, we deserve to be able to pat ourselves on the back and I, I really give it to, to our staff. Uh, who were able to predict uh, what was going to happen economically better than most and make sure that we were in a, a very comfortable position. Uh, people, the local taxes that they pay, county, school, and township, the only one that did not raise taxes was the township. Right. And our, our thought process there was, look, wherever we can give people a break, we can give a break. And we set ourselves up so that we would be able to do that without sacrificing any, uh, any of our services. So from an economic standpoint, we're, we're in good stead. And as we discussed in the first part of the, of the program, with the American Rescue Plan, we're going to be able to put back on track some of the things that we, we delayed. And that also you know, will you know, put us in, in a good place for our infrastructure and some of the other projects that we've had. I know that uh, many people that have been waiting, all right, when are we going to do something about the Palm? When are we going to do something about the Ardmore Avenue you know, Community Center? And we have a feasibility study that uh, is being um, uh, taken right now or, or uh, produced for us. Uh, albeit we did this once before and the study we <coughs> received was a little bit more aggressive and really wasn't doing what we were looking for there. But uh, this is something that has been on the to-do list probably too long and now we have got you know, the ability to go ahead and, and get that accomplished. So we're looking forward to not just fixing up the things and repairing things but also still moving forward. That's always been the mentality of this township. You know, what can we do to, to raise the bar? So uh, we'll, we'll continue in, in that process. So the, the, the State of the Union is good. Oh, that sounds great. And I know the Lower Marion positivity rate for COVID is about half a percent, and that's pretty exciting. Everyone is doing a great job. Yeah, you, you're great in sending out all that information, the details and the reports and the statistics. We've all become uh, specialized in immunology uh, stats and how to read them and interpret them and what, what have you from spreadsheets. Uh, but you're right, the, the numbers are extraordinarily low and that's you know, a very, very good sign. It certainly takes a lot of pressure off our health facilities and uh, both uh, Lankanau and Brimar at Mainline Health, they were amazing as to what they did within yeah. the, pa the past 18 months. Uh, in order to do that, as well as all of our, you know, our first responders, be it our police, our fire, how, you know, departments, how they, they handle things. So that will ease things up, wh which is nice uh, as we go forward. And we're looking to be able to, you know, return to normal in many fashions, including what we do for the board. Uh, we've been, you know, on Zoom forever. And as you know, uh, for months and months, I was the only one in the boardroom as we right. were trying to do that. Now, uh, just just about all, all my colleagues are, are back or comfortable being back. And the next thing is to be able to get the, the public so that when they speak, they can do it in the boardroom. It's far more effective for us and for them than on Zoom or reading their comments, which when I do it, I am sure people find that just absolutely deadly. <laughs> so uh, there's some exciting news um, about the general public and being able to come back into the township building soon. Yeah, we, we had set a target date of July 12th. And the idea was from when we announced it to July 12th, 
that would provide time for people who had not been vaccinated to do that, plus after the second shot, you know, two, two additional weeks. And it's time, you know, it's, it's time to go ahead and, and open up the, the building so that the public can conduct business here. And again, while we set up all of these uh, procedures so that people could do things online or make appointments at times and come in here, th there's nothing like the real thing. And where people were saying, oh, we didn't miss a beat. We don't know what we missed. And we just do know that it's more effective when the building's open. So come July 12, uh, we're, we are gonna be open for business and we have all the safety precautions that everybody's advised us in, in place. And we're all comfortable that you know that's the right decision to make. I know many of our staff, um, they're in this business because they love working with the public and they're very excited to have the public back into the building, that's for sure. And so in all of that, the masks are gonna be encouraged for the public who haven't been vaccinated yet to help keep our staff safe. And so things are really moving in the right direction. Yeah, I indeed, look, we, we can't require it, but you know, we'd say to people, look, if you haven't been vaccinated, one, reconsider that decision because uh, being blunt, it's silly not to. And uh, that uh, if you're not, you know, wear the mask, you know, for yourself and for others, you know, have some courtesy. And this being Lower Marion, again, you, you get these statistics, um, you know, large amounts of, of folks are vaccinated. I think the, the folks over 65 was what, 90 some odd percent? Almost 100, yeah. it's about 98 percent. Right. Yeah, so, um, you know, every now and then, you know, us old folks, since I fit in that category, <clears throat> um, you know, maybe we know something. So follow our, follow our lead on this one, but uh, we will make sure that we have the safety precautions that are in place, you know, for our staff that's here. That is a prime, prime consideration of, of ours. And I think it is also of the members of our public that come here. So that's why we're very comfortable saying, look, if we're gonna open up, this is Lower Marion, people are gonna do the right thing. And finally, if I could ask you to look into the near future, mm -hmm. what items can our viewers reasonably expect the board to take up the rest of this year? Um, yeah, no, another one of your, your excellent questions. There, there are you know, a couple items that are on there. There's a major land development with the Piazza uh, as to that as it, as it comes forth. So that, that will be an item that we have here. As we discussed in the first portion, we still have issues regarding the saldo. And as we go forward with the, the CIP, you know, making those decisions on what we're gonna do, wh which projects are gonna have those priorities. And I think the most interesting challenge is gonna be how we handle the American re Rescue Funds. You know, I said somewhat kiddingly of the 14 commissioners will be at least 15 you know, priorities, but trying to find out what's best for the township in utilizing that to make up for any of the deficits that we've had because of the pandemic uh, w will be a, uh, a very good challenge for, for the members of the board. And I, I am sure that we'll come up with some really good solutions to it. Absolutely. We're out of time for this edition of Behind the Gavel. Thank you, Dan, for being here today. And thank you, Lower Marion, for watching. I'm Lori Jennings, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.